All right. So the most important thing for me is to learn to give credit, no matter, um, no matter what. If someone told you anything that helped you, make sure to pass the message, but make sure to tell them who gave you this message too. This not only um, show you how um, basically good of a person you are, other than that, to me personally, shows that you are not really um, trying to basically put it under your own name. You want to let people know that you also learn from different places, you know, because um, I'm just giving you my own experience where people um, think like I made everything up myself, where every time I explained how Forexia helped me become who I am. So same thing with Mark, you got to learn from him. We are, I'm just all giving this because we are putting it on YouTube. I want to make sure anybody watching this knows that we have a much, much respect for this man. All right, yes, let's sorry. get into it. So the first, uh, by the way, we have five major topic. So we're just going to dive in. All right. So the first is possibility. Anything is possible through the proper mindset. It can be more true. <laughs> Um, if I want to, if I want to give you my own experience to you guys, it's about, um, it's about how I become Forex trader. And I'm going to tell you that when I wanted to start trading Forex, I didn't think I can do it. So I was keep telling my brother-in-law that you got to start this trading. I'm seeing how people you know, making money, but I'm not good at numbers. Like I was a lawyer back home, right? So no knowledge of numbers and stuff. I was a businessman, but as I said, not something that I can, you know, figure out the charts. I was thinking about that. So after he kept saying no, I decided to try it myself. And you can see me now, I'm trading, I'm full-time trader for the past almost two years. And that's because I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have the proper mindset that I actually can. No matter, I was, I was into the idea that I need to go to college for this. I need to study for this thing. And I studied something else. So that's not my path, which is absolutely wrong. You, if you want it so badly, you will create a proper mindset for it. And you make it happen. So make it possible. What do you think, bro? Well, you know, I mean, I can't disagree at all. I agree 100%. I would say that just look at where the people, look at where all the great people are at, all the great, we go to sports, the great athletes, the, the great, whatever, the actors, the Will Smiths, all those people that made it to those places where, you know, it might look easy. It's like, man, they're good as hell. It's easy. They just do it. It's effortless. I guarantee 95% of them have, this long journey, this long story of them basically pushing their limits years after year after year, they get to one plateau and they push and they push and they never let their, they never operate from a fixed mindset. I know we talk about fixed risk, but we don't want a fixed mindset where we feel, you know, I can't get any better. I am, this is where I'm at. Like maybe you learn how to trade, you learn some basics, um, and they're working, you're doing okay, maybe you're getting a 50%, few percent gain a year or whatever, and you tell yourself, okay, I'm good, I kind of got this down, I'll just kind of just hang here. And that's not the way to be because you're gonna just hang there, right? It's the person who says, what else? All right, where do I level up now? I'm starting to plateau. What, what parts of my game can I improve, right? So this is what makes the which makes you a goat, which makes you a great, which makes you one of the best in your field. You know, um, if you go to something like basketball, there are a lot of athletes who are just super talented or whatever sport, super fast, super strong, can jump really high, but they may not have the discipline or the belief system to keep going or, you know, the patience, all those virtues that we teach as a trader. And you see these people, they may have flashes of brilliance. They may 
kill it one year, but they don't have those legacy Hall of Fame careers. And then you have the others, the, the Hall of Famers, and they may not be the fastest, strongest, jump the highest. Of course, they'll have some ability, right? So you don't gotta be the smartest, the best trader, or the most genius math wiz, but you gotta have some, you know, intellect. You gotta be able to study, figure out how to use these computer programs, have that, you know, that ability to pick up information. But I'm um, just finishing off. It does it. That's not everything. What makes them great is that they keep pushing themselves. They don't. They don't limit their their beliefs in, in themselves. They say, "I can win a championship." No, you know what? I can win five championships. So it really does come down to your belief, and don't get caught up. Like Human was saying, he's like, "This guy's a lawyer. He could do it. And I don't know if I could do it." You know what? Forget that. I can do it. I know I could do it. <laughs> and we got the internet. So yeah. what's up? <laughs> Exactly. Um, one of my favorite sessions in my um, my courses is importance of being number one. And that's actually will show you if you try to be number one in anything you do, within a time, within a couple of tasks, you actually realize that you're much more capable of doing stuff you didn't even know. And this is really good. I'm, I'm not going to keep going on this possibility, but you got to understand it if one person in this whole world out of millions of traders making consistent money you can too you gotta understand it it's not something i'm telling you it's the fact you can believe it or you can ignore it so if you see either way you're right <laughs> yeah if you, believe you, you don't can, believe, if you believe you yeah if you don't believe i'm a good trader how about brandon brandon isn't how about dylan Dylan isn't, how about the best trader you know from anywhere in the world? Is he making money from Forex market? Yes, so you can. That's what I learned from my journey in Forex where I didn't believe on myself, I can do it. Well, and it turns out that I crushed it, like no one else that I know. That, you know um, so that's basically just proof, okay? So you can yeah, do it. Then and then just to add, like, we, you know, all those classes I do where I'm talking about, like, oh, manifestation, thoughts can be measured, all that stuff. It's a reason why. It's because what I'm trying to articulate is that if you, that, first off, you got to understand the, the science of thoughts, the science of how um, your intentions affect the reality around you. So that's what I spend a lot of time studying because, guys, I used to be so negative that I just manifested myself in the illness, bed stricken, and I had to flip it. So what I learned is you you have to set your intention. It's a it's a quantum process by you focusing on your attention, you affect the outcome of the actual atom, right? And there is something called the double slit experiment. I could share it. You could look it up, but it's a it shows that um, they were shooting particles through uh, this slit. And wherever the observer focused this attention, that's uh, how, where the particles were reacting. So it's kind of like they say, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it does, it, does it make a noise? I guess in this case, you would say no, because it depends on the observer. And that, guys, that's the beauty of our focus and our intentions and our thought. We can literally laser in on what we want and do it, okay? <laughs> that's our superpower. Okay. Well said. So now we get to the next part. This is, as I said, uh, it's a five tips that actually there's a lot of tips from this guy, but this is five tips you guys wanted us to talk about. So that's what we do. So the next is a strategy. Well, I think it's about a strategy where it talks about, talks about edge, where edge is an indication that a higher probability outcome can happen over another outcome. Not a guarantee. And this is very important, guys. And um, you want to start it, bro? <laughs> I can't um, I have something, yeah, but I mean, it's not the start. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I would just say, just think about your trading directly, how, how you, you kind of, let me, let me ask a question. How many of y'all, be honest, have kind of just chased this holy grail of trading where you're like, I'm going to find the perfect EMA. I'm going to find the perfect thing. It works every time. Anybody? I know, I know somebody. Okay. Got a few people. Everyone has, right? And I, you know why I know? Because I have, I probably spent 200 hours just 
switching up EMA settings, trying to find the Holy Grail one. But you know what I found out that there actually was no Holy Grail. And that's, and what I mean by Holy Grail is just like one method that's going to be foolproof. You do it every time you're good. Um, that's just not possible, guys, because as a trader, we, we're always going to be interpreting information that we have in front of us to make a prediction, essentially, on what's going to happen on the outcome. We just want to make these highly probable predictions, right? So we, we use the back test. We use our knowledge of market structure, et cetera. So we, but we have to go into the trade knowing that the outcome is random, knowing that we may have seen this stop hunt, this crazy stop hunt that works every time, second leg at New York. Okay, but maybe, maybe there was more liquidity to the upside. Maybe a new player came in. We don't know. The market is live. It's a living organism. So with that said, that's why you don't over leverage. That's why you keep your risk managed properly. That's why you have to shift your mind from looking at your trade outcomes as wins and losses and equating your own self-worth into that win and loss. You need to see it as a probability and you need to find that edge that over time, you're, you will be more probable to win than not. That's all we're doing. So it's really just a shift in mindset from an ego driven, I'm always right, I, you know, I'm the best, I can't be wrong, which a lot of us get. Even you go on that hot streak and trade and you get cocky, right? We've all done that too. So you need to humble yourself and realize the, that this is a random market and yes, you can have an edge. So yeah, that's what we do. We, we work to find our edges in a different strategy. Maybe it's ECR, uh, wedge breakout, whatever. These are different edges you can find. Right. And I think that's awesome. You literally brought it where I wanted. <laughs> okay. So um, it's important that uh, you mentioned that ECR. It's in my opinion, even even ECR, which is a great strategy, it can be um, less probable for someone and higher probable for someone else because <clears throat> just the rules of the strategy is not what makes an edge for you. It's your understanding from that strategy and knowing when to act. That's what makes your edge basically. So let's, let's give an I'm going to give you two examples, one in trading, one in like real life. So let's say you are basically going to take an ECR. All right. The example we were just talking, I'm going to give you an example from Brandon to myself. We both have literally same trading plan, a little different at the end. And that's what make it an edge. Same almost setup, but different basically times to act. So Brandon would take a retest of a 48 moving average on 15 minutes time frame. I would never do that. Brandon is making money out of that trades. Brandon has a really high probable setup for him, not me. Anytime I tried to copy him, did I end good until I realized that I have to find my own timing and my own reasons to enter. And then it turns out to be basically a DMA in higher time frame, or like maybe let's forget about DMA. Let's say just ECR. I would wait for a rejection candle with a week to the 96 moving averages, for example. So this will make it make me different from Brandon, even though we have same strategy. Okay. I hope it makes sense. And the second example I want to give you, it's about identifying what is basically that edge, okay? Let's say you are a sales representative in, in any store, okay? And there is a coworker with you, he's really good at sales. And anybody comes in, he says something that, that that customer will end up buying, small or high, um, he will buy. So you as a, as his coworker, you start trying to say the exact same thing he says, but nobody buying from you. Even someone told you, oh, it's cheesy what you say, but nobody ever told this to that other guy. So this is another example that someone can sell something with a script. Doesn't sound cheesy. You say that sounds cheesy. 
So this, I got well, one more example. Go ahead. If I can. Yeah, like in sports, I want to bring it back to basketball because we, you know, that's my favorite uh, thing to use as an analogy. So in basketball, everyone has their own jump shot form. You know, some shooters shoot ugly. Some shooters barely jump off the ground. Um, some shooters can shoot fadeaway, should shoot from further. Some people shoot in certain spots. And in basketball, it's about finding your form, how, you know, what works with you, what you're comfortable with doing. Some shots look super ugly. You're like, what is dude doing? But it works for him. And if you think about it, some of these, think about players who play for the same team, have the same shooting coach, went to the same college, high school. They'll, they'll have similarities in their forms, but you'll see little differences. You know, maybe one guy puts his foot position a certain way. The point being is like, even though, we learn, we trade together, we're kind of part of the same Forexia school of thought. It's about making, tweaking it to work for you exactly. And it's, it's really, it's a really delicate topic and it's something that's tough for you to figure out early on. You're just like, why can't I just, you know, trade this strategy 90%? And it's hard to grasp, but you really are finding yourself in the market. You're really, you really are finding you know, your personality, because the reason that's so important is because you got to repeat this shit year after year, day after day. You can't be like, oh, did Brandon say EU sells in Unity Group? No, like you got to be able, like, what if Brandon out there? You got to be able to repeat this. And that's, that's, I think that's what me and Human are really working to prepare everybody for. Yeah. And um, two, two more to add. Number one is finding an edge is not an overnight thing. It's not going to happen in a day or two. You got to keep going. And to be honest, it's, I have to tell you that you're going to lose money to find your edge. It's not like all true backtest. You got to actually find something that is easy for you to basically uh, identify. And then you go to live market, you start practicing it, and then you realize you're not even able to find it. So you go back and try to find that perfect edge for yourself. That's number one thing that I wanted to say. And the number two is um, that for you as a trader, you need to basically understand something. You cannot copy anybody. If one and one key important thing about this page that we are talking about, you wanna grab, is that stop trying to copy. Not me, not Elvin, not Brandon, not Dylan. That doesn't mean we are doing wrong, but that means what we are doing, it's not a guarantee that works for you. Even if I say, see Brandon say EU sell, you know, Elvin mentioned a pretty great thing. Brandon mentions EU sell. He's not even getting in. He says EU possible sell. Like you want to wait for that candle close. But in that exact same time, you see 10 of, you know, people in that chat room, they are already in before Brandon. And two minutes after that, he says, disregard the EU. But you are in that trade losing money. You see, these are important. You should not copy anyone. You can study someone like mad, like I did for Dylan. I, I could mute YouTube videos of Forexia and literally talk instead of Dylan. I knew exact word, exact time, depending on what chart he was showing. You can study someone crazy, but nobody ever sees me taking a signature trade. But I know the guy and how he trades and how he knows everything ups and downs. I know everything about him, but I don't trade like him. So please do not copy anyone. If you're watching this on YouTube, you don't even know me, please don't copy your mentor, you know? <laughs> Find your own edge. Let's go to the next. Predictive trader. You don't need to know what is going to happen next to produce a consistent income. Now, my opinion, you shouldn't get it wrong. That doesn't mean you should not predict the market because I do. What is important that you shouldn't think that your, your prediction is something that supposed to happen and, or it will happen no matter what. Predicting is just, you know, some, you believe that it's gonna happen. 
it's basically kind of a filter for me, you know? So I filter my trades and setups using my predictive uh, side of my brain. So my setup says buy, my prediction says sell, that's a filter, no trade. When they are in line together, that's a go. So you need to understand, you don't really have to, that's the whole thing. You don't have to predict everything. Because a lot of my students after a month, they, they ask me that, hey, I can't really predict the next move and it's like bugging me. And my answer is like, you don't have to predict it. Like you have all the tools and usually using the Forexia way of trading, you will get these signals hours before move actually happen. So what you actually need to be is reactive trader, in my opinion, react to the market and be like what as Mark English says. What do you think, bro? Yeah, I had a lot of points come to mind. One, think about all the people that can predict the market but can't trade it. They could tell you, like when I first started, I could tell you what was, I predicted the flash crash in 2018, but did I make money off of it? No, it didn't matter. So, you know, and then some, some people don't know shit, like what's gonna happen next, excuse my language. They don't know what's gonna necessarily happen, but they know how to enter. And that's actually what I do a lot of. If you see me do my twin trading and I'll take my profit, and it's always based on like, you know, where a potential profit target could be, you know, it's, it's a good risk reward. But, and people will say like, where are you taking this to? And I'll say, I'm just gonna trail it. And a reason I do that isn't just because um, I don't know where it's gonna go or I wanna maximize profit. Yeah, it is because I wanna maximize profits, but it's because it takes a weight off me. I'd rather say, shit, I don't know where it's going. I'm not trying to predict it. The market can do what it wants. But you know what? I'm in the trade. I secured my risk. It's going. Just let it go. So, um, so yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to. I'm going to keep using the basketball analogy. Or even, like, let's go to football, soccer. Say you got Messi or Ronaldo, one of the best. They're about to shoot, what do you call it, like a kick where a penalty kick is just the goalie and them. And you're like, oh, my God. They're the best ever. They're going to make it. They make this. 99.9% .9 of the time. So that doesn't mean they can't miss it. And they can, and they have. The best shooters miss. Michael Jordan has missed many game-winning shots, you know? But you still take those shots. That's what we're doing. We're basically saying you take high probable shots. You don't know if it's going to go in, but you need to have the edge, which is your form. You're open. It's a smart shot. You don't want to just take stupid shots from half court blindfolded all this but that doesn't guarantee it's going to go in and you have to be okay with that and it's important because that's how you're going to shoot the next shot you're going to take your next trade with confidence you're not going to be affected emotionally and shook up because a trade got you down because guys this is the most important thing to being consistent to staying a good trader is keeping your mind right because if you go on that downward spiral lose your confidence become emotional end up beat up you're going to be no good so this comes back to predictive trading is, is what I'm saying. So just know the nature of the beast of the market, know the nature of the beast of trading. You take your shots, you do use your edge, you take the predictive shot, but it's not guaranteed and you have to accept that. And you have to kind of just, what Mark Douglas was trying to get us to all do was like I'm saying, reprogram yourself to not think in terms of win and loss and think in terms of probability. Right. If, if I want to add an example, uh, live market right now, uh, today is May 26th. If you're watching it um, later on, you can check GBP USD. And from last week, I think about five days ago, six days ago, I called the price that was hit today. If I would buy at the time that I actually predicted, I would keep losing money. That doesn't mean so I want I want you to know that I predicted this buy, but I didn't even trade it because it wasn't my trading plan. And also, first, it really pushed down more than what I expected before it comes up. I didn't lose a single dollar on this pair in the past seven days. 
So I am a predictive trader, but my action allows me to, you know, just see that prediction playing out good or bad and not lose money. And that's what literally we are talking about. Your prediction has nothing to do with your profits, your money that you are making. Your money is com- coming from your action that you take during your trade. And that's pretty much it. So um, let's uh, go to the next. Last one. point. I just want to add, I was got to add my metaphysical sure. point. If you want to bring it to the science of things, you're, you're, when you're predicting, you're setting your intention on your outcome. You're saying, this is going to go in. I see it. I know it's going to go in. So that's fine to be confident in your prediction in what you're doing. But the other part of the manifestation process where people will forget is you have to let go of that intention, let go of that outcome. You, you, you release it and then you see what happens. So it's just this whole process. You got to do it and you can predict it. You can be sure you can be confident in the trade, but once you in there, you let it go. You don't hold on for a week. I was sure GU bro. Like remember GU, like I'm like, bro, move on. What do Brandon say? Oh, well, move on. So that's when Brandon says, oh, well, move on. That's what he's saying. Just let go of it. And just to knock it home, this is why you manage your risk. This is why you don't over leverage because you can't be for sure. And when you do it, because you're quote unquote sure, and it goes against you, it's going to cripple you. It's going to hurt you. And when you do it, because you're quote unquote sure, you over leverage and it goes in your direction, it's going to cripple you in the long run because it builds this, it builds bad habits. And then you're going to fall on your face. So there's no reason to over leverage. Yep. So um, we'll basically flow to the next slide, which is move on, learn and move on. Every moment is unique. The current trade is not related to previous or the next one. Um, I think I kind of was just talking about that. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty easy. And we basically said it. We have, it's what I want to tell you is that make sure that all these topics are not something separate. You have to take care of it. They are all related. Like you got to make sure all this stuff that we talk about is fixed on your mind and your discipline will help you basically to put it into action. So let's say if you say, I want to move on when I lose, then when you actually lose any trade, you don't move on. So that's not good. Your action and mind has to be same. And all of them need to be together in order to make it work for you. Okay. So make sure to move on every time you lose a trade. But first important is to learn from it. That's why we talk about journaling a trade and do that journal when trade is fresh. So you can actually learn from it. Or if you didn't learn from it at the time, you come back and learn from it later because you wrote it down. So please, um, we are not only giving you these topics that are important. Also, we are giving you basically a solution for every one of these things. So like, like we say, the edge, don't copy anyone. And in move on is learn and move on is journaling your trade. When you journal your trade, you're basically done with that feeling, done with that trade. If you're mad at yourself, just type it in your journal and be done with it. Yeah. It's funny. If you, I would never, ever share it because it's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to share yeah, my journal. I didn't call a couple people names. I can't lie. Yeah, my <laughs> journal is like, I'm killing myself. Like, when sometimes I go back and read it, I'll be like, damn, I'm hard on myself, you know? Like, I'm literally smashing myself in everything that I believe in. So next time when I read it, it hits me. So you can do that yeah. too. It's pretty good. So make sure to journal so you can learn and move on. And I would add, it's just, oh, I was going to add like the, uh, kind of like the technical part. Like you were saying, you journal, you write it down. And I was listening to Mark Douglas this morning when you told me I just want to refresh. And he was, he was actually talking about that. He was saying, you know, it's about writing down, you know, the trade, figuring out what you lost, figuring out like what went wrong, tweaking it, you know, tinkering. And that's actually like what goes into building your trading plan and your edge. 
but it, it's also what will help you stop making the same mistakes because I, that's one of the biggest flaws I see with a lot of traders is they don't want to like face what they're doing wrong. So how can you get past something and move on when you are just avoiding it? Cause you know, they say what you resist persists. So don't resist that you, you know, you got stopped out three times in a week doing something dumb and you just want to forget it and move on and, you know, start fresh. Like that's not how you start fresh. You need to really work through it, figure it out. And that's part of the process of moving on is working through it. And that's actually how you get better. And it's to give in a sports analogy, you know, that athlete, when Kobe Bryant missed a shot at the end of the game, and then after the game, he'll stay and shoot. Well, rest in peace, Kobe. He would stay and shoot a thousand shots. He'd be like, well, uh, I got to get better. So I'm going to shoot a thousand shots. So like, you know, you just got to find what works for you. But everything going back to like the discipline and the process and letting go and leveling up at the same time. Right. Sorry, you can go ahead, bro. No, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I really want to oh, okay. thank everybody. Um, we went 100 people um, from start to almost now. I want to thank everybody for being here. If you're watching us in YouTube, please subscribe and like our video. You guys in the live session, please go ahead and subscribe us. Golden Pips Generator and Win Life Trading is our channels. And that's pretty much it. Thank you again. And we'll see you again with another WinGPG session next week, same time. Peace out. Thank you, guys. Thanks, bro. Peace out, everyone.